its own stress in some cases, it's really a great blessing because at least they're getting paid. Others are simply out of work or even laid off indefinitely with no income on the immediate horizon. Businesses are closing their doors in compliance with mandates, some perhaps never to reopen because they won't be able to sustain that level of revenue loss. The stress is evident and in some cases quite obvious as people begin to panic buy and even fight over basic supplies. In his 1933 inaugural speech when our country was in an unprecedented economic crisis with unemployment exceeding 25%, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt addressed the nation with these words. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. In every dark hour of our national life, a leadership of frankness and of vigor has met with that understanding and support of the people themselves, which is essential to victory. His words resonated and rang true then, and I believe they ring just as true today, because hope for the future is an essential element of life. Without it, we turn into mobs, attacking one another, fighting to survive. The reason we're gathered around the word of God today is because in all of his kindness, and his wisdom, and his love for humanity, God gave us the greatest hope of all when he sent his one and only son into the earth to become our sacrifice and our atonement. Amen. Through his death on the cross and his resurrection of life, Jesus Christ delivered us from the greatest enemy of mankind, which is eternal separation from God, because the penalty of sin is death. Sin was and is a deadly disease. But Jesus defeated death. And now he grants life more abundantly, life eternal, to each one who comes to him. Yes. This is the message of the gospel. This is the hope that heals our diseases. This is the light that we carry into a world that's being overtaken by fear. Jesus is the way to the Father. He's the truth that shines in the darkness. And he's the life that grants eternal life to all who seek him. Amen. Since our first service in 2020, I've been teaching about this great love of God and his many spiritual blessings. Because I believe God's will for us is to connect people. That's our 2020 vision. That's our 2020 focus at Grace Christian Family Church, connecting people to God, to his church, and to each other. Amen. And right now, with all the fear and the uncertainty, we have one of the greatest opportunities I've seen in my entire lifetime to do just that. Because we have the hope and the truth that people so desperately need. Yes. We can be vessels of light and salt simply by caring when others are hurting and sharing our hope, our faith, and our love. That's what people need to see. That's what people are looking for, even if they don't realize it themselves. We are the people of God, equipped with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. That's why we've been studying what it means to be connected to God. Because when we're properly connected to God, he sees us in Christ. So he's no longer looking at us through our sins and our failures. He sees us through Christ's success and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says it this way, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
Somebody say, I'm the righteousness of Christ. I'm the righteousness of Christ. See, that's difficult for us to grasp as a reality. Just saying it sometimes makes my head spin. But the fact is, Jesus took our sins and in its place gave us his righteousness. When a person's born again, they become a new creation. In that moment, by the power of the Holy Spirit, they're washed of their sins and covered in Christ, and they become a part of him. So that's how God sees them. That's how he sees you. And since God sees us in Christ, we need to see ourselves in Christ. That means we have to see ourselves loved and chosen, holy and blameless. Because in Christ, that's who we are. And that's what we've been learning in Ephesians chapter 1. That's only the tip of the iceberg because we also found that God sees us free and forgiven. He sees us showered with his kindness, his wisdom, and his understanding. He's given us an inheritance in Christ. And we're sealed by the Holy Spirit and guaranteed our salvation. God's filled us with love and faith in Christ. And we're blessed with mighty power. This is how God sees you. He sees you in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. So to be properly connected to God, we need to see ourselves that way also. And only when we're connected properly ourselves can we help others to connect properly to God. Yes. What I mean is if you're improperly connected because your understanding of God is incorrect you carry that into how you relate to him and how you communicate God to others mm -hmm. when you look in the mirror you should see the reflection of someone who is loved and chosen by God mm -hmm. and if that person looking back at you isn't reflecting that back to you you should tell them you are loved and chosen by God amen It's all by grace. It's not of works. And that's what others need as well. Nothing but the grace of God will do. They need to hear that message. But even more so, they need to see it through your relationship with God. Yes. So let's take a look at how God is relating to us in Christ. And maybe then we can better understand how to relate to him in Christ. In today's message entitled New Nature and New Desires. Our serious text is Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, which reads, How we praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we belong to Christ. Today's focus is Ephesians chapter 2. We're beginning that in verse 1, and we'll go through verse 3, which reads as follows. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and many sins, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. Once you were dead, but God made you alive with Christ. Amen. Speaking of our former condition, verse 1 said just that, once you were dead. And when it says once, it says it because this letter is written to the Ephesian believers. Paul's talking to people who are no longer dead in their sins, but those who have been made alive in Christ. This is the power of the resurrection of Jesus. Because he rose from the grave, conquering death, he opened a pathway to life for all who placed their trust in him. 
Romans chapter 8, verses 10 through 11 says it this way. Since Christ lives within you, even though your body will die because of sin, your spirit is alive because you've been made right with God. Amen. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as he raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal body by the same spirit living within you. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit living in me. Yes. Your spirit's alive because you've been made right with God. When you came to Christ, you became a part of him. You are in Christ, and that means in Christ, you share his death to sin and his righteousness with God. Think about that for a minute. You share in his death, and by that death, you share in his righteousness with God. Mm, yes. And this, through your union with Christ, you've been made alive. It's that connection. It's that because he rose from the grave and you are united with him, you have been made alive. From the moment you place your faith in him, you pass from death and eternal separation from God to life and eternal connection with God. 1 Thessalonians 5.10 said this, He died for us so that we can live with him forever whether we're dead or alive at the time of his return. Forever is a mighty long time, but I'm sure looking forward to that. Amen. See, you were eternally lost, but God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son so that if you believe in him, you could have everlasting life. Amen. This is the greatest hope of all time because death, is the greatest enemy of all time. But Jesus triumphed over death, and through him, you now have an unbreakable connection to God. This is the assurance that we read about in Romans 8, 38 and 39. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't, and life can't. The angels can't. And the demons can't. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the powers of hell can't keep God's love away. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. This love is so great and so utterly fixed and anchored in Christ that nothing can ever break the connection we have, not even the powers of hell itself. You are deeply and utterly loved by God with an unbreakable, unchangeable, everlasting bond in Christ. Secondly today, our new nature is patterned after Christ and shares his desires. In our focus text, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it said, You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world obeying the devil. All of us used to live that way, it says. Again, Paul speaking, saying, used to because he's speaking to the redeemed of the Lord who've been transformed into a new creation. What that means is in Christ, you have a new nature that's patterned after him. Colossians 2, 13 through 15 speaks of this transformation like this. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Pay attention to that. Not yet cut away. Then. God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins. He canceled the record that contained the charges against us. He took it and destroyed it by nailing it to the cross. 
See, before you came to Christ, you had a sin nature. It, it, it was natural for you to live the way the world did. Paul said, all of us used to live that way. And indeed we did. But God made you alive with Christ. Now you're sharing in the life of Christ. His life is flowing through you because he's in you. Amen. And because he's in you, his nature is in you. When you come to Christ, he changes your nature to his nature. This new nature he gives us is a nature of righteousness. It causes us to want to live in a way that pleases God. Not out of fear, but out of the same love Jesus feels toward the Father. It, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's a love motivation, not a fear motivation. Amen. In Philippians 2, 12 through 13, we find an encouragement to fully embrace this new nature. As Paul writes this, he says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I'm away, it's even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. The results. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. That's the Lord. See, the results of your salvation is this new nature of obedience to God. And Paul is saying, embrace it. Work at it. And the reason why is because you're not working alone. God is working in you. Oh, I'm so glad to know that. I'm so glad to hear that. That's such an encouragement to me because I know I'm not in this alone. Amen. God didn't change me and then say, okay, I'm done now. D the rest is up to you. No, no, no. God says, I changed you and I'm changing you. Hmm. I changed your nature then and I'm changing your desires now. It's an ongoing work of grace in our lives. Let's look at Philippians 1, 6. We all know so well, but we'll look at it in the Amplified. And it says this, And I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. It's an ongoing work of grace. Amen. Yes. yes. See, God's not done with me yet. God's not done with me. And he's not done with you yet. Amen. He, he's actively working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. God's given us new desires, righteous desires, loving desires, holy desires, because we got a new nature. The change is ongoing. And by embracing it, we partner up with God. Which brings us to today's last point. Our new nature in Christ makes us subject to God's Peace. Mm. Our focus text in Ephesians 2 3 said this. He said, By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger. And we were. Because we were enemies of God. We were hostile toward Him mm. and a rebellion to Him. But when you came to Christ, you became a friend of God. Amen. Colossians 1 21 speaks to this very new relationship of ours. <clears throat> and he says, you were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has brought you back as his friends. 
He has done all this through, through his death on the cross in his own human body. As a result, he has brought you into the very presence of God. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. You don't ever have to feel like God's mad at you. In Christ, you've been brought into the very presence of God. Think about that. Brought into the very presence. God is the perfection of holiness, the perfection of righteousness, the perfection of goodness. When Moses approached the burning bush, what did God say? He spoke out and he told him to take off his sandals because he was standing on Holy ground. Holy ground. When Moses brought the children of Israel to the mountain of God, the mountain quaked in his presence and the people were terrified by the awesome power of God. Moses warned the people not to even approach the mountain because to come too close would be death. When the priests of the Old Testament were going to enter the Holy of Holies where the presence of God dwelled, they had to come by blood and only after being purified themselves because if they didn't, the holiness of God would consume them. Once when the Ark of the Covenant was being moved, a man named Uzzah reached out to steady it when the oxen stumbled and the anger, the Lord's anger blazed out against him and he was struck dead beside the Ark. Why am I telling you all this? Because approaching God has always been the most serious of matters. He's a holy God, yeah? Amen. That's why Hebrews 12, 29 said this. He said, for our God is a consuming fire. Mm. See, he's, he's holy and he's righteous and he's good. And evil cannot stand in his presence. It is consumed by him. That's why we needed a mediator. That's why we needed to be in Christ because Christ is righteousness. Amen. He is holy. He's perfect. And so in Christ, we find our salvation. Holiness would consume evil the way that light dispels darkness. Just by its presence, it changes everything. God's a consuming fire, but man, whew. when Jesus came that first Christmas morning, the angels declared glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all whom God favors. He declared peace. Peace with God to all whom he favors. See, they weren't declaring peace simply because baby Jesus had come. They were declaring peace because what Jesus would do. Mm. If you've come to Christ, you are favored by God. Amen. Yeah. You are the ones the angels were talking about. Your relationship is no longer one of hostility. It's one of peace. It's one where there's no fear because you are warmly welcomed in Christ. We don't have to be afraid to draw close to God. We're encouraged to do it, to get as close as possible. Hebrews 10, 19 says it this way. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. This is the new life-giving way that Christ has opened up for us through the sacred curtain by means of his death on a cross for us. Amen. Yes. That cross, it's the ultimate game changer. Christ opened up a new life-giving way to come right into the presence of God. We don't come in fear. We come in confidence. Mm -hmm. Not because of what we have done, but because of what he has done. Amen. Hebrews 4, 16 said, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. Amen. 
and we will find grace to help when we need it. We don't fear God. We trust Him. Because in Christ, we have peace with God. So now, we always receive mercy and grace to help when we need it. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today for the great riches and the spiritual blessings you've poured out on us in Christ. Help us to remember them moment by moment and day by day so that we might embrace this wonderful relationship Jesus made possible for us with you. As we walk through this world and we encounter those who are frightened or hurting, those who don't know which way to turn, grant us the compassion and the boldness to share with them the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, that they too may come to know these great and many blessings we found in Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Pastor Marlon. Pastor Marlon. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You know, I, I thank God that I'm no longer naughty by nature, but I'm holy by nature. You know, when we're thinking about all the things we're dealing with, our current situation we have to take all the precautions and, and do the things that are wise um, but we don't have to fear we have the peace of God that passes all understanding yes and just a little practical advice you know sometimes when life gives you lemons you can allow it to burn your open wounds hmm. or you can make lemonade and so I encourage you to take the opportunity uh, while you're at home to be with those that you love, to spend time with them, to do fun things. Um, we're starting a Monopoly marathon. You could be watching movies. I love to garden, go outside, you know, barbecue. You know, these are all things that we can do in the times that we have now. So, you know, make lemonade and just you know, be able to see that God is with us. And when that's the case, we have peace. And you can share that um, by the way you live and your neighbors can see um, that you're at peace. Amen. 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 Um, well, you know, we're going to continue to figure out ways to gather remotely. Um, but we will be on journey group break this week. So there will be no journey group break. Also, the men's and women's ministry um, have um, taken a step back until um, further notice. But again, we'll continue to work on ways to meet remotely and to continue to praise our God and, and live in 